Greetings. I want to talk today about the science of hustling. There is a science to it. Some people are born with the innate ability to hustle, to turn 50 cents into a dollar and so on. And then there are those of you who have the hustle in you, but it lies dormant until a particular need arises that you have to get out there and hustle because you've either lost your job or you've got added expenses and you find that your present income doesn't meet your needs and so you've got to find another way. Um, there's an old English proverb and I don't know who, uh, who first uh, said it, but I know it goes back to the 1500s and it says, necessity is the mother of invention. And this is why if you look around, you'll see that there's so many like products, there's similar products um, popping up, uh, who has the better vacuum cleaner, who has the better uh, steak, who has the, the better um, appliances, uh, and, and, so, and so on and so forth. You, you know, uh, there's just um, the same product being made over and over and over again because you don't even have to have an original idea to hustle. All you need is to be able to make a better version of something that already exists. And so a lot of people become wealthy through this. But even if becoming wealthy, um, if even if that does not happen, there are still ways to increase your income and live relatively well. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. I'm going to talk to you about things that I've done along the way that helps me to stay afoot and stay ahead of the game, which is the idea, because no one likes living paycheck to paycheck. And if you're like me and you're on a fixed income because you, you're now older and you know, you're disabled, then you want to um, take advantage of all that spare time that you, you have sitting around the house looking at TV or, or playing bingo and perhaps find some things that can, can help you supplement your income. And so that's what today's video is about. And we're going to basically jump right in. Um, and then, you know, I'll come back at the end with my commentary. So stay tuned. And, um, and thank you. Thank you for watching. This is going to be exciting. And um, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are too. So right about now, you probably have a lot of questions. You're wondering, uh, where do I begin? When? Um, what should I do? How? And um, the thing is, is look within yourself. Begin there. Because the thing that you're already spending a lot of time doing is probably because that's the thing that you enjoy. And you will find that if you, and, and this, there was a book written once, it says, um, do the thing you love and success will follow. And I'm, I, I probably have the title a little off, but the, the idea behind it is that that which you love is what you will become best at. I happen to enjoy writing. I enjoy a few things, but writing is at the very top of the list. And this is just some of the 35 books that I've already written. And you will find that even the most, um, the person who m may not have had the benefit of the greatest education may still have a book inside of them. Many of you are walking around with books inside of you. There are topics that you have explored and you have a lot of knowledge on and you wish to share it. Some of you just want to get something off your back, maybe a life experience or some type of traumatic event, and you want to write about it because you find that to be healing. Believe it or not, there is a market for every story. There are some readers who want to read about the pain of others for various reasons. There are some that they find these types of books to be very helpful in their own life. Or 
some people read just to escape reality. You, the, the, um, there were many authors of those fantasy novels where the guy comes on the horse and he comes and he just whisks you off into the sunset and, and they were called romance novels. That's actually what they were called. And there were, um, there was a woman, her name was Barbara. I can't remember her last name, but she wrote a dozens, dozens of the, these books and became very well known and very successful as a result of this. Um, so that, that may or may not be your gift, but if it is, now you don't even need a publisher to get published. I was able to go on to Amazon and create my own page, and it's still, and anyone can do this. It's absolutely free. You, you write the book, you go to um, a site called Create Space, that's where you begin, and they show you how to format the book so that when they print it, it actually looks like a book. Um, so you do have to put a little work in, but it's not difficult. They give you the, the instructions step by step. You create a cover, and I'm proud to say I created all my own covers. And then you put it online and you promote it. Promotion is key. In this world of social media, one of the biggest tools in getting what you've done to the public is via social media. You can tell a friend and they can tell a friend, but nothing works quicker than posting it online and having it take off. And speaking of online, there are actually quite a few online hustles that, that you can do that will increase your income. My biggest online hustle, aside from the selling of my books, is my YouTube channel. Now, as of today, I've got 66,169 subscribers. And that translates into dollars. How? Well, YouTube has a partner agreement, and I, I'm one of the partners, whereby if you allow them to run ads through your videos, you can make substantial income. And how it works, well, in my case, is that um, people who are watching your video, if they click on the ads, then you get maybe a half a cent or two cents, I'm not sure exactly how much it is, per click. So every month, I receive never under $500. Very rarely is it under $500. And most of the time, it's over that for the views that I've, I've uh, for the click, clicks that I've, I've received. You also get compensated for your views. I have some videos that have over a million views. And for that, there's a certain compensation. So you say, well, I don't know how to make videos. It's really easy because you don't have to. On YouTube, you don't have to make sense. All you have to do is make a video. There are people on there ranting about things. I, for one, I talk a lot to the young people because I used to work in hip hop music industry. And so I talk about things in relation to hip hop and the things of today that the young people are partaking of that I, I have issue with. I talk about sagging pants. I talk about whatever I feel like talking about because I don't care. I, I, I don't care if it's the yearbook answer. All I care about, I actually call my channel a ministry because all I care about is getting into the thick heads of these young people who are out there going the wrong way. And I have people who subscribe to my channel because they want to hear me rant about things. And, um, but I'm saying they've got people on these uh, YouTube channels who all they do is talk about style and fashion. There are so many hair channels where there are young ladies on, uh, and men who talk about um, different hairdos and, and different wigs and weaves and, and they show you how they apply these things and they show you um, what uh, they've bought and how it works. And so, you know, it's endless what you can do if you have the impetus to begin. That's the, um, 
there was a guy who made cookies. His name was Famous Amos. And he said the biggest problem with people is that they never begin. You could be sitting on all these great ideas, but if you never begin, then what's the point? It's just an idea. And then what happens is if you don't follow your dream, you'll wind up working for someone who is following theirs. Not to mention that how many times have you had an idea and then someone else came out with it and you're like, oh man, I thought about that years ago. I should have done that. Well, you didn't. The same thing with um, here in New York, we have the soul food salad bars and they, they're called manna. Everyone has the same name. There's about five of them and they're all named manna. Manas, actually, with the apostrophe. And they're in neighborhoods that are mostly um, African American. Why? Because it's soul food and they know that this is the cuisine of many Southern Blacks and also a lot of um, transplanted Blacks and Africans who are now in New York. And they make millions of dollars because the food, it's a salad bar, so you weigh it like it's a salad, but it's actually all sorts of soul food, potato salad, um, cornbread, um, chicken, ribs, whatever, you name it. They've got it in this, in this salad bar. And when they first came out, there were a lot of, um, the concept, the food is not uh, new, but the concept was new because when they first came out, there were a lot of um, black soul food restaurants already in Harlem, but they weren't selling it by the pound. You would order a plate and the plate would be X amount of dollars. What made this business more appealing was that people could pile up their plate with what, how much they wanted of whatever item they wanted to pile it up with and then pay by the pound. So they weren't restricted to portions, which is actually not a good idea, but the fact is, is that it caught on for people who really love this food and wanted to have a lot of it. And there were the, as a result, I, I recall hearing several um, people say, oh, we should have done that. Well, you didn't. So the, the guy who runs it, um, and I forget his name, uh, so I won't, I won't just give him a name, but he is of Asian descent. He's Korean. And he had the idea, he brought it over here, he implemented it, and it became a success. So I say that to say that you can have all these ideas, but if you never implement them, they'll never go anywhere. And it's not only about just getting wealthy, because that's another thing that can be distracting. We don't do what we do. To, you, we, we shouldn't. We should not do what we do to become wealthy. Wealth should be the byproduct of what we do. Do what you love. Actually, that's the correct title. Do what you love and the money will follow. One, you'll be better at it. Because what? Practice makes perfect. So if you spend every day just scribbling drawings and cartoons and things, that could be the hidden artist inside of you that's waiting to come out. The, and especially, you've heard the term starving artists. If you've got a talent and you're starving, then something is wrong. Because you shouldn't be starving if you have a talent. And if you don't have a talent, it's probably because you just have not discovered it. You, you don't know what it is. Now, one of the things that, um, that I found that I could do and it was my talent, and I took it to the nth level, was playing my cello on the streets, being a, a street performer. And the thing with that is that I've always loved performing, even though when I worked in the industry, I worked behind the scenes. I started out as a performer. I had my little group, and um, we started out attempting to get a record deal. We were cute, but we didn't really, um, we, we were in hip hop, so we wanted to, that was the field that was open to us then, because at that time, there were very few hip hop artists, so they were looking for more people, because um, 
Sugar Hill had bust that door wide open, and so now here came all these other people. What stuff we were doing just for fun in the hood, we wound up making records and, and, and making a, a business out of it, and now it's a multi million dollar, um, even billion dollar business because there are independent companies that, um, that have, you know, made millions. And so we started out attempting to get some of that money. But the problem was, is that cute was all we were. We, we couldn't really hang. I, I rapped the way I talk. So it wasn't, it wasn't catchy. It, it, it didn't it didn't pull them in not only that we were trying to be the first female hip-hop artist and we just couldn't cut it we we wound up doing um a show a lot of you have heard this already I, we wound up doing a cop a competition up in the bronx against the fat boys and needless to say they blew us out of the water so the point is is that i had to then rethink well how can i stay in this game and make money and so i became a manager and then i wound up um being quite successful at that but it was because i loved it and so when i retired i said you know i really i still want to perform i really never got to to perform because i was so busy behind the scenes and so i just swallowed my pride and i said you know what i'm gonna dress up in costume go outside and i'm gonna play my cello and sometimes i would even sing and here I am dressed as the cello angel. And um, this really went over well because a lot of people were very comforted seeing an angel in their neighborhood. And, and I was actually in here where I live in the East Village um, performing. And it gave me income. If you look to the left, you'll see a little red bucket. And that's where the people would drop their money in. And, and this is the other thing with street performing. If you, if you choose to do it, you don't always need props, especially if you're really good. I'm not really good. I'm just good. And so I added the props to enhance my performance. This is why when you go and you buy a ticket and you see people on stage, a lot of times they're all gussied up because that can distract from maybe a lackadaisical performance. Not always, some people are actually good and they still look good and they are good. But then you have a lot of others that they've got all these fireworks and pyrotechnics and all this other stuff going on on stage because without it, you'd probably fall asleep. The other thing is that I wound up making the daily news in my town because the more outrageous my costumes were, the more people were intrigued by it. So as I got into it, and you'll find this too, as you get into your, um, your talent and whatever it is that you choose to do, you will become more creative because the ideas will begin to flow and you'll begin to, to really want to be the best that you could be. And you have to swallow your pride sometimes. Some of us, the reason that we stay broke is because we're too proud to do certain things. And when it comes to doing things that are perfectly legitimate and perfectly uh, legal and can bring you income, there shouldn't be no pride. Because I've always heard in my generation, we say a closed mouth never gets fed. And that indeed is a fact. If you're sitting on some gif and you have no food in your house, something's wrong with that picture. The other thing that I um, took on in terms of just um, creating more income for myself, which was totally in independent, is that I began to decorate things. Like I said, you know, there, there are sometimes you can take something that is already exist, is existing and make it better. So I decided that I thought my cello was kind of boring and I wanted to make it better and in doing so i um i started to decorate it and so i um i added these embellishments to it and um and it's basically you can find this stuff online it, you you've got um i go to amazon for almost everything and i went on amazon and i found um these little um beads the beads you see there 
those are hair beads that I just added to the cello and then um, I um, got the rhinestones you can get like these little bags of like hundreds of rhinestones and actually um, the and the little rhinestone glue and you can just sit there if you have patience like this is why I say you have to actually enjoy what you do and I applied that and then I added like some flowers as you can see and um, I took some glitter paint all this stuff is relatively inexpensive but what happens as a result of this when I'm out there playing people want to know hey where'd you get that and then you tell them I made it myself and there's business there are people who will pay you to do things that they either don't have the time or the patience to do and it's beyond just fashion you've got people who need people to clean their house and they don't want to go through an agency for whatever reason so you go on some of these sites like craigslist or angie's list and or whoever's list and you post up your talent or your skill you're a plumber, you're not getting enough work, so you post up, I am a competent, reliable, honest plumber, and I can fix everything. You shouldn't lie. If, you, if you're not that good, then perhaps you should wait till you get good. But if you are that good, then say it, because that's what people want. They will pay for good service. Um, my talent lied in decorating things because I, the other thing, I just don't like to feel like I'm in a parade. I don't want things that everybody else has. I want my own things because I've always had this need to stand out and to be special. And since as a child, I, I guess I didn't get enough attention. Well, it's a fact. I didn't. And I also didn't feel like I stood out enough. So now that I'm older and I can, I do everything I can to be individual because I miss that. I, I never had that. I never felt special. Now when I walk down the street and my little things that I created, people tell me, oh, that's great. Oh, uh, that, well, where'd you get that or whatever. And it makes me feel special. Uh, one of the other things that I did was I, um, I had these Uggs, which were already pretty unique, but then I blinged them out by putting the rhinestones and this is actually this is something called bridal um, trim and it's really cheap it's like five seven bucks a pack and it's just little rhinestones that are on a strip and I added them to my Uggs so now my Uggs are even more exciting and they stand out even more I had an antique Chanel bag that was just it was on its last legs so I took some roses rose appliques which were very cheap they're just made out of material and I sewed them on there and I added the little glitter to the bottom which it's not glittering too much but if you look closely you will see the black the bottom part it's glitter and it gave the bag new life um some of you may recall that I had these glasses and what you didn't know is that when I bought them and I bought them off um Oh, I can't remember the site right now, but it, you can Google them, and they're cat eye glasses, and um, or they may call them cat woman glasses. And I thought they were pretty unique, but then again, I said, you know, I could expand on this and make them even more exciting. And as you will recall from some of my earlier videos, I bling them out, and so now they're not just cat woman glasses; they're cat Rebecca glasses because I've suited them to my tastes and you would not believe how many people stop me on the street and like where'd you get your glasses and I'm like I, I designed them I can design you a pair as well there's so many hustles that are out there I can't even go into all of them in this video um, sometimes just the need to be active and to this is why arts and crafts are so much fun because some people just need something to do but did you know that your crafts can actually lead to income here i am um, one day i just i was bored and i decided i wanted to make noah's ark because i had this little bag of animals 
and um, they're little plastic animals I had ordered online because I knew I wanted to do something with them because my whole place is kind of beast oriented. I guess that's the Ethiopian side of me that just wants to feel like I'm in Africa when I'm in my apartment. So I have lots of things that are, are um, animal orientated. I have big, um, I have a big panther, stuffed panther by my door and, and so on and so forth. So I, um, I took these little animals and I made Noah's Ark. And I'm so proud of it. Um, the other thing that I find um, works for me anyway is that in my love for animals, I found a way to indeed turn that into a hustle as well. So I'm known as Miss Kitty the Cat Mommy because I do cat sitting. And you would not believe what people will pay for you to take good care of their cat while they're away. During the holiday seasons, seasons, people want to know that their animal is in good care so they don't have to worry about it while they're enjoying their holiday. And this was something that, and I still do it, and the income is incredible. Um, you can make anywhere from 25 to $45 a day depending on the length of the person's stay, uh, the length of the cat's stay. And, um, and I find it to be very lucrative as well. So I'm going to kind of stop here because um, there's so much more. I mean, there's Monkey Calls. That's a uh, site where they uh, hire people to call people on special occasions, birthdays, what have you. And you have to be able to act. So they, they want you to grunt like a monkey and you give people these monkey calls and you get paid to do it. You know, there, there's just, it's endless. You have to search. You have to search for the thing that is, um, is suited to your personality. Because if it's not something that suited to your personality, you probably won't do well at it. This is why some people find themselves in jobs where they hate it. Because they hate what they do. And always... You know, as a backup, you could order my book on Amazon, Hustling 101. And I have about 101 ways that you can um, make money. And I subtitled it, Selling Your Talents Without Selling Your Soul. Because in today's generation, the word hustling has actually gained a bad connotation, which it shouldn't because it simply means the ability to be a go-getter. So I recommend my book. If you want to step up your game, then you definitely want to read this book. Or if you have no game and you want to get some, then get this book. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. God bless and happy hustling.